Jason gets tired of you. But, so, I thought for this five minutes, I'd do, just challenge myself and do something I haven't done before. Um, so I put on Twitter, what can I do a five minute presentation on? And I had some ideas about the method of presentation, but also what I could present it on. So, I'm just gonna put some music on. This is a track called Dandelion. And this one up here should work. Now this tool that I'm using here is called Specify. And it's a really nice tool, because what you can do is you can collect images and various other things that you like from around the internet, and you can put them all in one place. I actually used this when I was, when I was teaching quite a lot to see what people thought about a certain thing, like about the basics and stuff. So um, if this was working properly, I'd have some music on now, but it doesn't seem to work, so I'm just gonna leave that. So I'm gonna start off and tell you some stuff about dandelions, and the reason why I've chosen dandelions is because of this. This. Right, this, which is the OER info kit. The reason why we chose dandelions as a motif for the OER info kit was because dandelions produce seeds which are scattered throughout the place, and it was that kind of emphasis on stimulating sharing, which is what the OER just funded HE Academy thing was all about. The other thing is they're beautiful, so it looks nice for the wiki, um, and the, the previous wikis I'd seen had lots and lots of text on it, I just want some type of image. Lou McGill is a fantastic photographer, so we used some of her images to start off with, but we also used Creative Commons license photos for that as well. So that's the reason for the dandelions, and that's the reason why I've kind of linked that in and done dandelions for this as well. So what I want to do is I want to tell you some stuff about dandelions. I want to tell you by the end of this presentation, basically that dandelions aren't something you should be chasing out of your garden. They're actually something you should be eating. Right? So by the end of this presentation, I hope to have convinced you of that. <laughs> so this is what we usually see when we see dandelion. Usually it's got the flowers on the top and stuff. But actually, it's, it's known as, the reason why it's called a dandelion is because it comes from the French word for lion's tooth. So it's got these kind of serrated big teeth that lions have. Um, that's the old French word. In, no, in modern French, it's called pissing lit, which means piss the bed. And the reason for that is because the roots are a very strong juretic. And in fact, in lots of languages around the world, um, it's known by that kind of limb, the fact that it's got this strong juretic function. That's something I'm going to come back to later. So around the world, it's known by different names. And I think I'm going to get this right, Teresa. It's called mlech in Polish. Is that right? Mlech. Mlech, yeah. Which comes from the word for milk. Um, that's because the sap inside it is kind of this milky white sap. And if you rub it on your body, apparently it's quite a strong mosquito repellent. Oh. So next time we remember. In China, the Chinese are fantastic at being literal. It's called pu gong ying, which means quite literally that flower that grows in public spaces by the riverside. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing if not literal. Um, so what can be used for? Well, the Native American Indians used to use it for medicinal purposes, like the juretic function, also to cleanse the blood, because it's quite good for the liver and all that kind of thing. In Canada, it's actually a registered drug. Um, you have to go and buy it over the counter, dandelion things. Um, it's actually got more, more vitamins A and D in than um, spinach has. So this picture comes up here. I don't think I'm on the board properly. Let me just do it over here, sorry. This picture here of um, somebody having dandelion and potato salad, I haven't tried that before, but apparently it's got more iron in, more vitamins A and D, so it's a really good thing to eat. So perhaps I'll have to try that out afterwards for dandelion picking afterwards and starting this stuff. <laughs> the thing which I hated as a child, I used to go to the shops and before I used to get migraines and things when I used to drink Coke, people used to have dandelion burdock. My dad loves dandelion burdock, I can't stand it. It's been brewed in England since 1265, and St. Thomas Aquinas apparently used it to concentrate while he was writing Summer Theologica. But actually, Kurtz, the proper dandelion bird, is actually slightly alcoholic. I should imagine he was actually a bit away with the fairies. <laughs> so going back into the garden, if I can uh, move over here. Taraxicum family, which means it's asexual, which means it doesn't need to pollinate to, to spread itself. So every time you see these little things growing like fairy dust in the wind, it's actually pollinating itself by itself. And because the Taraxicum family doesn't need that type of pollination, it means that every single dandelion is genetically identical to the previous one. So there's actually just loads and loads of twins all over the place, these little dandelions in the garden. It's all exactly the same. And the final thing I want to tell you about with dandelions, if this is going to work, come on. <laughs> bees. They're really important to bees, dandelions, because you think, well, why are dandelions important to bees if they don't pollinate? But 
They actually need all of the nectar inside the dandelions early in the season because dandelions flower really early in the season. And it tells the bees that it's the start of the honey season, so you need to get out there and start foraging for all the nectar and everything like that. So it's really important to bees. Unfortunately, it's the it's the it's the, it's the stuff in the dandelions which the bees get, which makes honey an allergen to some people. So that's quite not not a very good thing. But I think it's more than balanced by the fact that it's a strong diuretic. It can cleanse your blood. It can be eaten. It's got loads of iron, vitamins A and D. So what I'm going to do is instead of getting the weed killer on my garden this year, I'm going to start eating my dandelions. Thank you very much. <laughs>